I grew up in a semi-small town. By semi-small, I mean it was small enough for everyone to know each other. We had a library and a high school. In this town, there was one specific alley that led to nowhere, and there was not a single street lamp to light it at night. Apparently, this alley was restricted. There was a sign of no trespassing, and in general, my parents were also very shady about that. They told me there is nothing there but some kind of a warehouse of a city, and I should not think about it too much. However, there was also an urban legend. This was that kind of an urban legend that your brother tells you when you are young and naive, when it is so easy to scare you, but he still makes the effort to make it up as a horror story to keep you at night. I also heard the story for the first time from my brother Kevin. As the story goes, the warehouse is not a warehouse at all, but is used to be some government medical building where human experiments were carried out. Later, the public found it out and it was shut down, and we can't go near it because there is still expensive medical stuff there. But supposedly, there is also this creature that walks the halls of the old building, and at night. He comes out to eat. When Kevin told me this story, I was eight or so. I remember asking him, "What does it eat?" At this point, I should tell you that at this time, the whole community was looking for a lost kid, Mark, who was my classmate. Kevin said, "Well, people, of course. What do you think happened to Mark?" When he said that, I started crying so loud that our parents noticed and came upstairs. Mark was my friend, and I couldn't bear the thought that he was eaten by that thing. My parents were so mad at Kevin. I remember my dad even slapped him, not because he made me cry, but because he dared to talk about the alley. It was not the last time I heard about the being in the alley. In fact, as time passed. It became kind of an inside joke between young people. Every time some family moved or we noticed someone missing from the class, we jokingly said, "Probably the being in the alley got him." Kids love that stuff. Adults not so much. Even heard about a kid who was suspended after he joked about the being before the principal. When I became 12, talks about the being became subtle, because there were also talks about people vanishing. And it suddenly wasn't that funny. It was this older kid, Eric, a real bully. He always walked with these three henchmen of his, beating up kids, stealing their lunch money, that sort of stuff. He always got away with it because his dad was the police chief. They beat me up a lot too. Even stumped a cigarette on my arm once. The burn is still visible. Long story short, I was scared as shit by these bunch. Among all, by Eric. Around this time, my parents decided I should take folk dance classes. <laughs> yeah, like I was not bullied already. But anyway, the folk dance community was really nice. Made a lot of new friends there. The problem was that the classes were late in the afternoon and lasted till the evening. But of course, my parents always picked me up as soon as possible. On one evening, my dad was supposed to pick me up, but he didn't. Later, he told me he simply forgot, but I know he was out there drinking, so I decided to walk home alone. It was around 8 p.m., so it was already getting dark. The street lights were on, so I didn't worry. As I turned the corner, I noticed a group of older boys was fooling around on the street. Of course, it was Eric. And his gang. I tried to walk past them while keeping a distance, if possible. Eric had a handcuff, probably from the chief, and he handcuffed one of his goons to a street lamp as a joke. I tried to be as invisible as I could, but just my luck, they noticed me. Look who's here! Said Eric. Get him! He screamed, and two boys ran towards me. I tried to fight them, but come on, I was outnumbered. Eric threw his cigarette on the ground and stepped on it. Then he released his friend, 
the one handcuffed to the lamp. They started to walk towards me, and Eric started to speak. Well, I'm glad you came. You're in luck you can finally meet the fifth member of the team. They started laughing, and two boys grabbed and dragged me. Where are you taking me? I asked. Patience, said Eric. We went past one street and the other, and finally, we've arrived at our destination. Yeah, it was that damned alley. As I mentioned before, there was no street lights, but complete darkness. As we passed the no trespassing sign, I started rationalizing things. There's no way that story's true. It's, it's an urban myth. It's made up. They just want to scare me. They're gonna beat me up and then leave me alone. I told myself. We reached the end of the alley. At this point, my eyes got used to the dark, so I could see most things. There was a pole on one side of the alley, and a door on the other. Then those jerks handcuffed me to the pole, so I couldn't run away. I told them this was not funny. Then Eric said, Well, you're right. It's not. Not yet, anyways. As he said that, he took a key out of his pocket and then opened the door, then knocked twice on it. What happened next, I... I never forget. The boys, along with Eric, started running away while laughing uncontrollably. All I could see in the building was darkness. Then a form started to slowly emerge. It was quadrupedal. First I thought it was a large dog, but as it moved, it became much clearer. Hairless thing with a really long neck, like a, like a goose or something. I could see his spine, his head pointed towards the ground. What it did, I, I wouldn't call walking, but an increasingly fast crawling. When it reached the door, he lifted its head. I was freaked out. That thing's head was somewhat human looking, although it missed the nose, but had a hole in that place and was full of scars. And its eyes, those were human eyes. Its body was like that of a quadrupedal human. Between its legs, there was nothing but a wound. Its hands were missing the thumbs, it looked like paws. It stopped and sniffed the air, and then started panting like a dog. It didn't look straight at me, but was looking all around me. Then we made eye contact, it noticed me. His jaw started opening much larger than a human possibly could. I noticed that its teeth were also much sharper. As it opened its mouth, I heard the most terrifying scream. I started crying and moving all around. Then the thing ran towards me and bit my leg. With my other leg I managed to kick the beast, which annoyed him enough to let my feet go. As it would jump on me, I managed to pull the pole out of the ground and accidentally hit the creature with it. That animal must have noticed that I released myself because it ran straight back to the building. I didn't think much and ran back home immediately. Didn't look back either. Years passed since then. I didn't tell anyone about what happened. The police chief had a fatal stroke a year ago. And suddenly Eric wasn't so untouchable. Heard he went straight to prison when he was caught beating up one of his goons. He deserves it. That guy is a psychopath. And that thing... I don't even want to think about it.